In music, there are essentially three types of microphones that we use the most. And each of them is slightly different. First is a ribbon microphone. Second is a condenser. And third is a dynamic microphone. Okay, so essentially these microphone types all do the same thing. They all convert air waves or sound waves into electrical energy. And we're not going to talk about the mechanics of how that happens, but what we're going to talk about how these microphones are different from each other. Okay? A ribbon microphone, first of all, is a very fragile microphone. It doesn't like to be bumped. It doesn't like to be dropped. It's a fragile piece of equipment. It also has certain characteristics that are associated with it. A ribbon microphone tends to have a warm sound. A lot of people would say it sounds kind of retro. It's smooth. Some people also may say it's dark in quality. Um, let's talk about this microphone type. It's an old microphone type that's been around since, I don't know, the 20s, 30s. Early microphones, most early microphones, were ribbon mics. And if you think of the old crooners like Sinatra, uh, guys like that, Bing Crosby, and you imagine them, you know, wearing a fedora and a and a suit jacket, singing into a microphone in front of an orchestra, and they're singing into this really large um, microphone, and may say RCA on the front. All of those early mic types like that were, generally speaking, uh, ribbon microphones. And that's how we perceive the sound of those artists as well. Uh, retro, smooth, warm, dark tone. Uh, so those mics were oftentimes used on performers like that. And that's the technology they had at the time. In recent years, ribbon microphones have made uh, quite a remarkable comeback, and a lot more people are using them now uh, than they did, say, 15 or 20 years ago. So what type of instrument may you use a ribbon microphone on? Well, anything that you want to sound warm, retro, smooth, or dark. Now, you could also use it in, in the opposite way. If you're recording a brass or a saxophone, something like that, you may use a ribbon microphone because it will tend to darken, smooth, or warm up the sound of that instrument. So a ribbon microphone would be a good choice on a sound that may be considered harsh or bright because it will darken that sound. So that is the basics of a ribbon microphone. Let's talk about a condenser now. Condenser microphone is probably best known for the fact that it's a really nice full frequency microphone. Okay, If you want to capture the entire sound of the orchestra or the entire sound of, of a band, something like that, you want to get a full frequency capture of everything that's going on musically. So a condenser microphone may be a good choice for that. One of the things that's interesting about a condenser that's different than the other microphones we're mentioning here is it requires its own power supply. You have to supply a condenser microphone with power for it to work. And this power is usually called 48 volt power or a nickname for it is phantom power. Dynamic microphones are unique in that they tend to be really good on transients. And you go, what's a transient? Well, a transient is something that creates a very strong attack. A good example would be drums. Drums are a very sharp, abrupt attack. They have strong transients. So as a result, dynamic microphones tend to work well on drums. Dynamic microphones are also quite sturdy. They take abuse well. So an application where you may see a lot of dynamic microphones would be in a live situation. So miking up a live band, sound 
reinforcement or in a PA at a concert. Okay, you'll see a lot of microphones that are dynamic microphones and it's because they're sturdy if the singer decides he wants to swing the mic around and drops it most likely it's still going to work they're very durable very sturdy microphones if you do that with a ribbon microphone you'll destroy the ribbon and you'll be sending it back to the factory to have it re-ribboned so those are some of the characteristics of these three microphone types that are commonly used in recording music Okay, I thought I would show you just a few different microphone types. This is a Shure SM57. It is a dynamic microphone. And you probably recognize these sitting in front of guitar amps at concerts. Very commonly used microphone type and used a lot in the studio here that I'm at, my studio, on snare drums. Very common microphone. This is an AKG 451. It is a condenser microphone, so it requires power, 48 volt power or phantom power, for it to operate properly. This is also a condenser microphone. This is a blue dragonfly and it's a nice full frequency microphone because it is a condenser great for acoustic guitars uh, drum overheads variety of other things even vocals this is a di or i'm sorry this is a ribbon microphone cascade fathead 2 it's got a small ribbon of metal in there you can't really see through the screen but if you could, you'd see a small strip of metal in there. That's the ribbon. So that's a ribbon microphone. This is an ATM25. It's another dynamic microphone. And this is a bare dynamic or buyer dynamic microphone, an M260N, and it is a ribbon. Okay? So one of the things that is important to note with these different microphone types is that this and this look alike, but this is a ribbon, and this is a dynamic. So this and this kind of look alike a little bit, but this is a dynamic. And this looks smaller than the others, the AKG 451. looks a little more like that type, but it's not. It's a condenser. So you can't really tell the microphone type based on the look of the microphone. You actually have to know what kind of microphone it is, which is important because if you decide you think this is a condenser microphone and it needs phantom power or 48 volt power and you will supply this ribbon microphone with 48 volt power, you will most likely destroy it because ribbon microphones do not like phantom power. The only microphone type that does like it and needs it is a condenser microphone. So there's a brief overview of the microphone types with some examples.